Round one, playing against Tuveli, who is opposite the table from me, winning the die roll, so that's nice. We'll play first. And we got a keep. A couple two drops to slow the game out, and then uh, Rock Smaller, so yeah. I'll lead with a forest for no particular reason as we wait for my opponent. My opponent mulligans to six and then keeps. There's that forest. Ooh, another blue drafter. Oh, we got a three drop even, so that's really nice. I'll go ahead and rock out the visionary. I don't actually need the maritime guard right now for defense, so we'll just draw a card and get more options out for us so we have better decision decisions to make. Opponent's playing a fetid imp. We have wild instincts for later. For now, just go with the orchard spirit to pass the turn. My opponent wants to sit back on blue black. That kind of works for us. Generally speaking, blue black does a little bit better of being a control deck. Um, I want to somehow I want to be trying to get this fetid imps off the table, so I will attack with the orchard spirit. Oh, maybe my opponent's playing a more of an aggressive version. In that case, um, we can we can do some trades um, in life and stuff. Three in the air isn't a huge deal at the moment. Yeah, my opponent is playing a bit aggressive, so maybe this wild instincts will come down now. Um, Do like an Orchard Spirit, kill the Fetid Imp, attack with both. My opponent might just chump, I don't know, might do a trade, that's fine. But then we'll have our Rock Smallers pretty clear. Opponent does get a draw a card, um, but that's fine. I just want to uh, make sure I'm disrupting my opponent's plan and making sure that my Rock Smallers is, is nice and ready to go. Firing Aeronaut, fine. Does mean the Sorcerer Spirit just like gets blocked for days. Opponent's gonna bash in for one. I'm flooding the wee bit. Um, do I want to trade my Orchard Spirit for the Spiring Aeronaut? I don't think I do. Because my opponent can't fully attack either because I get a crack back. Um, this is a lightning rod right now for removal, but my opponent has it, my opponent has it. I can't just sit around and do nothing at this point. If my opponent attacks with everything, I assume there's removal here. Yeah, so it looks like I'm going to get hit with some removal. I'm not falling behind if my opponent does remove the rock smaller, because um, we're trading equal amounts of damage. The thing is, this maritime guard is just going to be a waste of time against my opponent. So my opponent's going more for the, uh, the tempo play, which I like instead of a removal spell. It, I'm not super, wow, that's a bummer. Um, still go ahead and I'll attack in with my Orchard Spirit. So I don't completely fall behind in the race. Plus I'm not planning on blocking next turn. Now I can represent um, a combat trick with my forest up. The opponent has a follow up play though. It does mean that um, I need to be drawing not lands in the near future. But we're at, we are at equal um, landage, as it were. So it's not like I'm getting super hosed compared to my opponent. We're both at six mana on the table. It really just comes down to if my opponent has another bounce or removal spell. Because then my opponent will be like ahead enough. Yep, here's the removal spell. So if my opponent had it, then it's going to be pretty hard for me to uh, catch up in this race. Scott Goliath's nice. Uh, I just don't have a creature to uh, get Home Slice out of. It's still it was trading 3 for 3. I'm just like really far behind. The question is, do I want to leave the Elvish Visionary back to try to get it in the yard? Um, I actually do. I don't think my opponent will attack still, but if my opponent does, that, that's okay. I think I'm going to be too far behind, though. I'm on a three-turn clock. Because right now, if I attack for that one point of damage, 
uh, my Maritime Guy blocks the Separatist Void Mage, but doesn't die. I actually want the Elvish Visionary to die, which is unlikely, but I need to set up for a possible win at least. Yeah, my opponent doesn't want to like trade an Elvish Visionary for Separatist Void Mage, so we're down to three here. What I can do is try to attack in with both. See if my opponent takes the bait. Highly doubt it. What do I draw here? A forest. Do I... So if I attack with everything, my opponent's going to sense some kind of combat trick and then just wins on the crackback, so that doesn't work. Um, all I get to do is attack with my Orchard Spirit. I'm, gonna, I'm attacking here because my opponent might want to just use removal spell, but or might want to um, bait out the uh, combat trick. It also allows the Separatist Void Mage to feel comfortable attacking next turn. It, it does mean I die to a removal spell, and I'm dead in two turns anyway, so the Scobgoliath really isn't doing a whole lot, but I might be able to hang in there if I get the Scobgoliath down, plus like I draw something that gets me out of this. don't really see that happening, though. What do I have in this deck? Fetid Imp. Another flyer means I'm dead, I'm pretty sure. I don't have any aerial volleys in the sideboard, which is a bummer. Yavis Force Mage doesn't do it. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Did I play a land last turn? I should have, because I was the whole point was to try to draw something to get there. Uh, it doesn't matter because the flyers are gonna gonna finish me off. So I'm not gonna show another um, card because I there's just no way I'm out of this. Opponent's going for that trader Roo. I'm just seeing if my opponent will play another card. I doubt my opponent will. I'm already thinking about sideboarding my opponents, playing the aggressive one dropper flyers. I'll just go ahead and concede here. Do I have anything that works against it? The uh, the maritime guard we saw is pretty uh, lackluster with in the air. Could be that this Ringward Island is going to be nice, so I can just get another flyer online, so I'll bring that in. I think that's about it that I want to trade out. I don't have a, Again, I don't have a lot of uh, sideboard options. Do I just trade out another 5-drop? Maybe get rid of the Force Mage? I don't want to take out the Maritime Guard. It does do things like, you know, slow down some of the ground people. I just didn't see any grounders besides the uh, Separatist Void Mage. But still, that's something. Is this Evolutionary Leap going to do a whole lot? I don't think so. It helps me dig, though, for, like, if I have, an, you know, ground guys that don't matter, it helps me dig for, like, a flyer. I think I'm going to get rid of the Scob Goliath, since I'm not too sure my creature's necessarily going to be dying. It's more like a tempo game. Um, and then I'm going to play the Ring Warden Owl. And it, it'll basically, since my opponent has just a bunch of small dark creatures, I don't think Scob Goliath's really going to do a whole lot anyway. Once I get my other five drops down, they're just as big and formidable. That's my reasoning. I do want to play first. Um, this is a nice keep. Pretty strong hand. Just probably put some pressure on my opponent. Very miscreant, of course. That's pretty nice, too. If I draw a 4 drop, the one 4 drop I have, I can use the Leaf Gilder, but probably not going to happen. Um, I'm actually probably just going to play the Valorant Wardens next turn. Another Fairy Miscreant, my opponent needs to draw a card. Play it. Home Slice playing the Fairy Miscreant deck. No blocks. Here's a Wild Instincts. Hmm. Do I want to trade my Leaf Gilder for the Mary Fairy Miscreant? Not really. Could be wrong. But. Maybe if it was the first Fairy Miscreant, I didn't want my opponent to start chaining them together, but this Valor and Warren's going to be able to attack through pretty nicely, and this Wild Instincts is going to clear away something scary, so that's nice. 
Can't get Reeve sold yet. Assuming I draw a land. If I don't, then Leaf Gilder will be my, my four drop here. Opponent appropriately, just going with their game plan of attacking. What is this? A Claustrophobia. Conclave Naturalist will do nicely once we get there for that guy. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and play the five drop right now. Sets me up real nicely in the very near future. Yes, I do. And now we just have so much power on, on the table across from my opponent. We'll have to see if my opponent uh, can get out of this. Opponent did not have... Uh, does not have removal spell mana up yet, so we'll at least get to have one nice turn. I'm thinking like a, you know, a five mana black removal spell. I guess another claustrophobia could come down, but we have two pretty scary dudes here. We get to follow up with some nice plays, either a wild instinct to get something formidable. Um, we can do both bounty crisis and elvish visionary. We get to get into another card as well as get the bounty crisis down and tap down some tempo here. If I put as a separatist void mage, I get possibly value from the Conclave Naturalist in the future. Tower Geist is good. My opponent gets to draw that card no matter what. That's definitely going to take a Wild Instincts, and then I'm going to bash in for a bunch and draw a card off of the Wardens here. Because um, I, I do want to minimize the damage I'm taking in the air. Opponent, of course, gets rid of that guy. I do have six mana. I could arguably play the Elvish Visionary as well as... and just not attack with the Leaf Gilder. That seems pretty nice to me, actually. I'm not super racing. I'm just going to draw two cards this turn and attack for seven. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Another land. I already played a land, right? Yeah, okay. So one, two, three, four. Um, does it matter? My opponent's tapped out. No, it does not matter. Hit for seven. Ouch. Draw a card. Thank you. I'm clicking OK. What's going on? OK. There we are. Two drop. Not particularly exciting. Would have loved to have gotten one of my more powerful spells, but that's OK. Now I'm a little less worried if you know a second swamp comes down or a removal spell takes out one of my powerful guys, since uh, I still get a bash through for a bunch. And then this Bounding Crasis and Timber Pack Wolf are coming down next turn. Um, to keep applying pressure to the board. Now I do want to be asserting some aggression. Since my opponent has a lot of cards in hand and I'm starting to like run out of um, gas, that uh, I do want to try to close this game out before my opponent can deploy a, a whole bunch of threats. Though it, it should be in my favor based on, I'm assuming that my opponent's synergistic deck has less individually powerful cards. Though that's certainly not a given. We already saw Claustrophobia Tower Guys in the previous game. Um, Unholy Hunger and some nice removal, so. The opponent can have quite a lot to stabilize. So we've gotten a lot of card advantage out of my opponent already. Things with like Conclave Naturalist, Valoran Wardens, Elvish Visionary, that sort of thing. No blocks. follow-up play, or are you thinking a removal spell? Interesting, I can use Bounding Crisis if another uh, Claustrophobia comes down, just to do a huge hit or something. Something to pay attention to. Opponent's thinking hard. Probably has a removal spell. And it's trying to decide, do I use that, or do I... Oh, I see. What are you going to bounce? You're going to reset one of my guys? My Conclave Naturalist, you're going to reset. Okay. I'm not going to play it. I'd rather play the Bounty Crisis and the Timber Pack Wolf anyway. Um, we'll attack... Pretty 
pretty much with everyone. See if my opponent wants to go for the faint of the Elvish Visionary. No, I have the... No, I don't have the... Um, yeah, I do have... I still have the um, Evolutionary Leap, is what I'm thinking of. And if these guys trade off, that's fine. I don't need the mana anymore for the Leaf Gilder. I'm doing more damage in the air than my opponent is. And I get a follow-up with... Um, more action. I'm not gonna um, tap down a fairy miscreant before combat. I'd rather play the bounding crisis to tap down a follow-up play or you know a creature after combat. So hopefully my guys can get through. Maybe if there was one of those enchantments that came by and I was lower on life and I was worried, I would do that. But instead, we're just gonna try to get my opponent um, at end step. Opponent could not have anything, and that's fine too. Could again have that removal spell that my opponent seemed to be tanking on, whether to play the Void Mage or to kill a guy. Opponent might be reading a Bounding Crisis also. Um, since they play the Timber Pack Wolf instead of the Concrete Naturalists. Don't know. Still, if my opponent's holding up and trying to do something against that, I'm okay with it too. It allows me to get the Naturalist down. I don't think I'm going to get any more value from it with an artifact or enchantment, but I will at least... Uh, is this a counterspell? An Unholy Hunger. Ah, I see. So I'm like, ah, I'm losing this race. I can't let this happen. No thanks. I do not want to untap you. Alchemist Vial is nice. Let's uh, cycle this guy first. See what's happening. What kind of cards I draw. And we have a follow-up play, so that's also very nice. My opponent will know what my last card in hand is. Do I keep this island? I don't know, but for sure. Attack with all creatures. Yeah, I'm definitely going to keep adding to the board. My opponent knows that the Concrave Naturalist is the last card in hand, but I want to be able to keep the mana up for the in case uh, something silly happens with these miscreants and I want someone not to be able to attack or block, which would be not attack. There's nothing I'm worried about right now at 11 life, and we have a lot of power coming through. Comes with Drake, which can't block, so that's fine. Is my opponent, yeah, my opponent's now on defense, which is fine. Um, so we'll just attack with everyone. So my opponent's just in chump mode, that's great. In that case, I will keep the Concrave Naturalist in hand, because it doesn't help um, me win, and I lose to like a Languish or something. If I were to play the Naturalist and my opponent languishes out at one life, um, that's the only way that I think I could lose this particular setup. So no need to play the Naturalist there. Uh, it seems like our draws really determined our uh, our games there. As in, I feel like my opponent just had the draw that was fast. And then this time I had a draw that was just powerful. There wasn't a whole lot of interesting decisions, I felt, in those first two games. Uh, I do like this Ring Warden Owl over the, uh, the Scob Goliath, so I'm going to keep that as our only game plan. A little worried about being on the draw this time against my opponent's deck, so my opponent can have a nice fast start. So that's a, that is quite a disadvantage in game three. Here I'm going to keep because I have a nice two drop. Um, if I don't draw a third land for the Wardens, I have the Alchemist Vial. My opponent did Mulligan, though presumably my opponent's aggressive deck Mulligan's better. However, going down to five helps out quite a bit. Opponent doesn't... Ooh, and we have, oh, I, I just realized I don't have a Forest. That was a huge oversight. This alchemist file will still help out, and I still have another draw to get a forest, but I don't have a two drop. It's not a particularly relevant two drop, but it's certainly, uh, as I say that, um, certainly can. This can really hurt right now. Um, I did completely um, draw insanely there. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I I can play that. Visionary is a great matchup against the Scob. I get to keep drawing into cards. 
and more lands, which is really what I need anyway. So, man, was that lucky. Mind you, of course I do have the most uh, cards in my deck, forest and islands. So, there you go, still. And Ithu? Um, do I even bother attacking with Elvish Visionary? I was not going to block, but do I want to open my Valor Valoran Wardens into... I'm not going to block if my opponent attacks. Happy to offer trade. Yeah, we're behind on the race, but I'm going to be uh, adding to the board here. And we're going to be able to go 2, 3, 4, 5 at this point. And then follow up with like some 2 drops also. So in pretty good shape. Claustrophobia could be used on the Valoran Warden. That's fine. Oh, okay, so my opponent's going for the aggro here. In that case, I'll just... Oh, I see what's happening. Cool. Um... I think I just used an alchemist vial here, right? One, two, three, but then I can't do anything else. Nah, we'll wait to do that. Right now my opponent's playing this just so much so that there's defense. Um, I'll keep developing my board first. You be careful, my computer's lagging. I'm clicking my OK, but it's not showing that that's happening, so. We'll just ping away. And really, I'm in a good spot if my opponent has to play defense with Infernal Scarring and Screeching Scob. Because my opponent is stuck on mana after that mold of five. Um, what do I want to do? I kind of want to start getting this Valoran Wardens online. And this uh, Alchemist file. It also, again, keeps me away from Languish. But just getting these huge hits in are going to be nice. I could play the Soul Blade Gen instead. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense, actually. Even though it's my bomb and I'm worried about it um, dying, my opponent's so far away from Languish, and it's the only card that like wrecks my board, that next turn I'll be able to play the Val my second Valoran Wardens, as well as Alchemist Vile and make Screeching Scob unable to block. And if my opponent... Yeah, only has this type of card, you know, Fairy Miscreant, which was drawn. That puts me in such a strong... I mean, I don't know how my opponent's going to bounce back from this. Alright. So, first and foremost... Valoran Wardens. Alchemist Vile. Pump everything. Draw a card. Can't attack or block this turn. I'm going to F6 and then attack with everybody. This all happens. So many cards. That was nice. Um, and uh, my opponent concedes. Yeah, my opponent just got screwed there. So pretty un uninteractive game, or uh, match one, to be honest. Like I said, I don't feel like there's a lot of decisions in the first two games, and then um, this last game was just a mana screw. Uh, on top of just an insane draw by me. So on to the second match and see if they'll have a more interactive game then.